People are crazy. Yeah, that's 
Good to go? Yes. Yeah. Me neither. I'll keep telling myself that. I don't know if I'll believe myself. Maybe I'll just keep smiling. Oh, that's a good one. Well, what do you think? It's not a... <laughs> we can shake it more if you want. Oh, gosh. <laughs> you want to go in front of us? Sure. <laughs> yeah. I can eat a mock straight in a... Regular non. Okay, this is it's only a few feet off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> the more people doing it, the more comfortable I feel. <laughs> You did it. How's it feel? <laughs> Would you do it again? Oh wait, you have to. <laughs> Yeah. Those are redwoods, right?
Everybody's drunk on this thing. <laughs> I don't know. I'm doing it. Left, right, left, right. Oh, there it is, right there. It's right here. DT09? I don't know if the rim is right or not.
180 miles northeast of Dutch Harbor, the Aleutian Ballad is jogging through 40-foot seas and 60-mile-per-hour winds. And suddenly, Massive rogue wave the size of a five-story building has sideswiped the boat. Rogue waves up to 100 feet high often appear without warning in mid-ocean. The 60-foot wall of water which smashed into the 100-foot fishing boat turned it completely on its side, causing the engines to shut down because of a sudden drop in oil pressure. Season two, deadly as catch. Uh, most requested footage. You're on that boat. Also back there, there's a book. I highly recommend that you uh, find that book and lead through it. It will edify your trip, this boat, and how we got to be where we are today. Two of those waves came together in about a hundred foot wave, picks this boat up and throws it over onto its side. We have four crab tanks, one, two, three, and four. Now at the top of every tank is a hole that big. We put our craft in that water to keep them alive, right? You're hit by a 100 foot wave, you're knocked on your side. You know how fast the water pours out of four holes? Less than a minute, half of the water came out of this boat. And now the other half is on one side, you're done. 60 foot waves are crashing over the boat. Man goes the gap is holding through. We're going down, boys. We're gonna abandon ship. Get your survival suit on. Zip them up. I take the top of this tub and I hook it to this anchor. I'm gonna take the bottom of the tub and hook it to this buoy line. And ideally, that anchor will go out and all of these hooks will go out in order, followed by the buoy line. Not always the case, but that's what we're shooting for. And like I say, if I was going to be set more than one tub, I'd have the top. I'd have a table back here. The top of this tub would be tied to the bottom of that tub. The top of that tub to the bottom of that tub. And he'd be driving away, and I'd just be spinning this tub, letting the hooks out. Well, as soon as I emptied my tub, I'd grab the one behind me, and somebody back there would set another one up and tie it up. He ain't really a giant, but they can get pretty big. This is actually pretty big for one in the southeast. Uh, it's also they call it a bullhead and just lives on a rock pile and just eats anything it can. Now, from what I understand, they're pretty decent to eat, but I never have, and so I can't, I can't really. It, the flesh on him is great. I mean, he's from the lean cod family, got a big bucket head mouth, but they're just super bony. You don't see too many people taking them all. And they're about 70% head. Yeah. <laughs> but they're pretty cool. Uh, they're beautiful fish. And they're a hearty fish. Loins out of this guy, man. That is good stuff. White flaky meat, just don't overcook it. You're, it's to die for. And they do, they catch these things in such numbers up here. They measure it metric tons, hundreds of tons. Uh, that's going to be, this fish can actually get up where it's 25, 30, 35 pounds. I have photos of myself, I swear the thing's over 50 pounds. Uh, we would get them in our pots as bycatch. But that's your Pacific cod. Look at the mouth on that thing. This guy's probably three and a half pounds. Imagine being 60 pounds, what he could eat. It's down there, whoever's got the biggest mouth wins. There he is. There is an unbelievable amount of salmon running by this pilot. This Luella set of rocks. I mean, this is their way to get back into the stream. They're headed up, and they all come through here in mass. But there are certainly a lot of predators hanging out that actually know their game plan. <laughs> Now the 
adults have the white head and tail, and it takes four years to achieve that. Once they do, the only difference between the male and the female, the female gets slightly larger. Males might tap out <laughs> 9, 10 pounds. Females may get up with 12, 13. Now, why is the wingspan? Now, it depends what you read. Uh, I'm going to tell you that it's a stretch for them to get six and a half feet. Six foot, I'm a big bird, pretty much the scale. Oh! <laughs> Dive bombing now. <laughs> covered his own bump. Folks, you notice at the top of those trees, as we idle up here, you go further toward the wheelhouse that come into view. We made for life. We can live upward of 25 years in the wild. It's a long time for pretty impressive. Conditions up here during the winter can be brutal. Yep. Longest living one I'm aware of is 32 years. There is a pucker stream, and it's got that purse down at the bottom, keeping that web tight. You want to do that, the web relaxes, you can start stacking these like upside down cereal bowls. They make them bigger, they make them smaller. In the space that you're only going to get two of those big square pots on those boats, you can put 25, 30 of these, however comfortable you are with them, however tall they get. Now, the way it works, we got a bait jar in here. The bait jar is perforated. There's holes all over that thing. We use squid and herring, the most popular bait. Scents going back and forth in the tide. Those crab pick up on the scent. The sink fishes 360 degrees. They can come up the side of that pot, just like that, and down through the top. You weren't down there. Maybe it looks like that. But uh, <laughs> and then we got it. What kind of crab did he say this was? He'll flip the scale. He might startle you, but you're fine. Put him down lower so I can see him. Yeah, Specific. You go looking for their habitat. You're looking for red crab. You're looking for about 250 feet of water. 
and you're looking for a muddy, sandy, tacky bottom. When you're looking for that blue king crab, a little less salinity, a little less salt and water, a uh, gravelly bottom, there's some islands up in Perry Sea that post those conditions. These guys here would go upwards of 2,000 feet. Uh, that's deep, yes. You don't have to, but they're, they're out because of that. You have to be patient with this golden Alaska king crab. Folks, to get them back to the boat, they do have to be a male for us to commercially retain them. And I'm going to tell that by the abdominal flap. The fact that that comes to a point, that tells me that's a male. Female's very distinct. What it looks like? A fan. The reason she has that, she has a clutch of eggs underneath there. She's protected. Upwards of 250. Wow. Oh, yeah. Apparently, he ate the slime meals. <laughs> no, everything we said about slime meals is true, but this is a giant Pacific octopus. Now, why is he in the barrel? We put him in the barrel. You know those uh, box feet grab? Yeah, he came up in that thing. You're going to eat our show, you're going to be part of our show. We bring him over here. We caught him a couple mornings ago in that box crab pot, uh, put him in the aquarium. The barrel's kind of a timeout. He actually is being part today. Now, folks, I gotta tell you, this animal has nine brains, and I think that's the most incredible thing because it is colorblind. And when it gets itself over the top of something, we've all seen it, you know, they put themselves over it and they immediately mimic it. Well, if he's colorblind, how's he doing it? Because of the neuron systems in those brains. It is so complex. The only solid thing on him is his beak resides in the center of those legs or tentacles. There are over 200 different species. Uh, only one of them can actually do us bodily harm. Everybody get the picture of that? So nice us. Not raining and I can actually see figure out feet ahead of me. I can see the mountains.
Out there, huh?
good?
Islands in the Alaskan Aleutian Chain of Islands. The Aleutian Chain, officially the Alexander Archipelago, but the Aleutian Island Chain stretches out from here more than a thousand miles into the Pacific Ocean. And uh, military forces from the Empire of Japan had actually attacked and occupied another one head to tail in there, having something go wrong and then be uh, uh, required to evacuate and seek refuge inside one of those safe houses where two motor coaches, a hundred plus people, are going to a facility that can only accommodate 60. And so one of these uh, uh, safety protocols is to put that, uh, that gap in between us. It is a narrow tunnel. Uh, you won't feel claustrophobic uh, because they've come in and done improvements. They've opened up the top, but my driving surface, I have eight and a half inches on either side. So here you go. State of Alaska always had ambition. They wanted to uh, increase the connectivity of this. They wanted to access uh, the rich fisheries of Prince William Sound um, through Whittier. Uh, they, they were thinking, of course, recreation. They were thinking, of course, tourism. A certain level that'll kick on one of those turbo fans um, and, and what direction uh, they can uh, uh, reverse those directions. So they'll kick on one, two, or three and, um, and address that. Uh, but having said that, you know, oh, here, we're through. Yay!
better than the tram ride too. Yeah. About five minutes. Hey guys, good afternoon. Um, it's going to take us about five minutes to get up today. We just started at 300 feet. We're going to 2300 feet. When we get near the top, there's going to be a tower. I'll give you guys a heads up as we pass the tram. We'll swing just a little. So if you're standing, I recommend you hold on to something. Um, other than that, guys, enjoy the ride. I don't know if you guys have any questions. Oh wow. This time, on the way down, over our tower, it's just a small drop, like a miniature roller coaster. Tower of Terror. Free air conditioning.
guess they smoke cigarettes. Someone does. Or did. So are they doing redoing a basement or something? Or I don't know. Hmm. Go to the road and come back. Is that uh, your own side entrance, maybe? Snow shovels. See the cat? White cat. Mm-hmm.